Greetings, salutations, and hello from me, James, your BA Sensei, back again, Power Query Tutorial. Part 2 of Running Turtles. Part 1. Please do not continue this video if you haven't watched Part 1. It's important that you understand Part 1 before we move on to the more advanced Part 2. We're going to do month-to-date Running Turtles. Recap. Video 1, link in the description below. Video one, we basically just had um, a list of dates daily with sales. And what we calculated was a running total for each day running infinitely. What I want to do now is I want to basically only do a running total for each month. So for January, up to the end of January, it should be 15618, yes. But then Feb, it starts afresh instead of in running forever like this. So for Feb, it should run fresh until the end of Feb with a total of 17356. Um, that's basically the mission here. So what are we going to do? Let's quickly open Power Query. So what I'm going to do first is just duplicate this previous one, call it month to date. Yeah. I'm going to delete all of these steps because we're going to go a little bit deeper this time. First thing that I want to do is I want to group year and month together as one. So currently I, I can't do that. So how will I do that? So basically I will just add a column, say custom column. I'm going to say month, uh, year. I'm going to create a string there. So we're going to say date dot month. And I'm going to put dates in there and say, okay, cool. You can see it's a month. You can see Jan Feb. But what I want to do is, I want to create a text out of it. So I'm going to say here, t uh, number to text. I'm going to feed that in there. And I'm going to say, and if we delimit, so we'll just be a little dash like that. And I'm just going to copy this to get the year. And the year. And we're going to end up with a beautiful little month here column like this. I'm just going to put it over there. There we go. All right, next part. What we want to do is I want to group because I want to do a month to date by each month year. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say transform and say group by. And I'm going to say I want to do a group by on month year. And I want to do it. There's none really of these. I'm going to say all rows, which will create a table for the grouping. So if you look at that, it basically has the month year and then it just has the table. And you can see if I click there, it has each day listed in that. So that's January. If I look at May, each day for May with the sales amount is in there. So basically grouped it by month year and contained everything in the table. Okay, excellent. All right, the next step is a little bit more complex because now we're going to go into the advanced edits and we're going to use custom functions again. Okay, so let's go back to the running title query from the first video. Rewatch that, please. And then we're going to go to advanced editor. And as you recall, in the last steps there, we had add index and add custom. That basically did our running total and created an index for us. I'm just going to copy that out. Let's copy this whole thing out there. And just say cancel. And then we're going to come back to the running total here and do this. We're going to create a space here. We're going to call a custom function. It's going to say comma there just to call the running total function. Yes. And now I'm going to basically paste that code in there. Remember the M code has a let. M code has a let and it ends with a, a, a N. Okay, cool. But if we're going to call a function, we need to give that step a name. You see each of these steps, they have names. I'm going to give this one a name. I'm going to call this run function. And I'm going to say, let's declare a perimeter. Run table is the perimeter, and you can give it any name. And the input would be a table as an input. We're going to say as table. And the syntax for doing that is a little arrow like that. Cool. But what we want to do is we want to send this table into our first function, which will add an index. And then from there, we'll add a custom column. Excellent. I can see some issues here, but I'm going to rather let it happen to explain to you what is wrong here. So I'm just going to say done. Oh, things are working beautifully. Anyway, my issue didn't really appear. Okay. So what we're going to do now is 
I now need to invoke. The function didn't really run. You can see nothing really happened. The reason why is the function is here, but it's completely separate from the other M code. You can see basically the M code stopped at group rows and it stopped at group rows. This is just being ignored. So if I really want to do something with this, I need to put a comma there. I need to then say, create a new step. And this new step is going to be called run totals. Okay. And I'm going to use a cool function called table.transform columns. So let me quickly get that for us. Table.transform columns. Basically, it transform any, this function allows you to transform a table, right? You take a table as an input and then you give it um, a column as an input of that table and then you can transform that any way you want. What we want to do with this is we want to give it, we want to tell it like, we have a two table, uh, a two column table, which is month, year and the count with a table inside of a table. And we want to push all of that through this run total function that we created in video one. Okay, so you say table dot transform columns. Yes. First argument is a table. So the table is this month, year and the count table we have before. And this is from group rows. That's the previous step, what it was called. So I'm just going to say, put that in there. That is the table. So now, what columns do I want to transform? I want to transform the count column. So I'm going to say, put it in brackets. I'm going to say here, the column I want to transform is count. Okay, but how do I want to transform it? I want to transform it by taking each one of these items in the table, which is that, and push it through this function over there. So I'm going to use each basically will say each row within this table there I'm going to push it through this function so each I'm going to run the function or run function and what are the parameters I'm giving it see the run function needs a parameter and the parameter is each of these table the way that you specify that is with the underscore that's how you do it okay and if I say that now it's going to do nothing also. But the reason is, if you look at advanced edits, see this last step, this n, this is how m works. It just skips the step. So I just need to put run totals into that last thing, which means we'll actually call it. See what happens now. See, there's the run function, okay? And there's the run total step. And if, if you click on this, right, look at this now. So basically, it ran the content of the table through that query so, or that function and basically added the index and it did the running total for each one of those. How cool is that? If I expand this now, I say I want to see the actual date, I want to see the actual sales amount and the actual running total. Look at this. Basically, you can see, so let's quickly check for January. Okay, so we have a running total there. It's adding, adding, adding. So up until the end of Jan, it should be 60. And then it starts again at February. How cool is that? And I'm just going to return this to Excel. And you're going to see the results. Isn't that glorious? We've achieved what we wanted to achieve. Excellent, guys. It was a little bit more complicated um, with a little, a little bit more things I didn't completely explain, which I will deal with in future videos. But that's the steps I would take in order to create a month-to-date running total. Anyway, BA Sensei out.